Michael Julian with Live It Stoked. And in this LAS episode, I had the opportunity and the esteemed pleasure of meeting a true lord of Dogtown, an innovator in vertical pool and ramp skating, the legendary Tony Alba. And it was an incredible experience. Um, it all kind of culminated from a moment where I was starting to heal and trying to maintain stoked energy, trying to restoke. Um, in between two pretty major surgeries that I had in a very short period of time, which I've talked about many times in these videos. And um, I was watching TV one day and all of a sudden there was a Vans piece uh, that Tony had collaborated on with Vans, um, where he was in the valley at home um, talking about his new lifestyle, his new point of view, his new outlook on life, uh, and what he does to maintain a stoked and spiritual center these days. Um, Tony's made some major changes in his life um, and has also overcome some major challenges and obstacles as well as some of the other Lords of Dogtown, um, which many people know globally. And it's a beautiful thing to watch that crew restoke and recharge their energy. Um, but I was lucky enough to watch the piece um, and in this duration of time actually got well enough to capture uh, an interview with him very short piece of time at a van's opening in uh, Salem, New Hampshire, um, and he was kind enough to speak to us about how he maintains a stoked lifestyle, um, how he stays focused and positive in his new lifestyle, um, what that exercise and that practice is like, and uh, it was absolutely incredible. I know you're going to enjoy it, so check it out. Tony Alva, live it stoked.
I'm standing here with one of my legends, somebody who inspired me to not only skate, but live a stoked lifestyle pretty much until this moment. Um, and I'm here to talk to Tony a little bit about how to live a stoked lifestyle, how to overcome life's objectives, you know, obstacles, and like what, what you're taking on top. I know you went through a lot of loss too, and I you know other people who have. Uh, I just recently went through a very heavy deal with my neck. Every day for me is like a spiritual journey, so what I do first and foremost is make a connection with what I would call a higher power by just um, the thing that works best for me is meditation and just to take some quiet time for yourself, you know, to have a connection with what I call God, which is my understanding of just, you know, a higher power. It's not a very religious thing, it's more of a spiritual practice. And obviously, uh, prayer goes with meditation, and it just depends on what your faith is, you know. Um, my faith is that everything's just gonna be fine. It's gonna be uh, what we call equanimity, spiritual balance. Right. Yeah. Equanimity gives you, uh, you don't get too excited, you don't go to the negative side, but you don't get too in the adrenaline kind of crazy. Uh, the other side is don't get out the middle. A lot of times what we say is, uh, you don't probably go to the end of the rainbow, the spiritual rainbow, it's like the path, the path. Yeah. That's what I do. I mean, a lot of my stuff, uh, it's connected to surfing too, and because I, I live near the beach and I, I surf avidly and cross train for skateboarding as a surfer. And there's a connection with nature, you know, through that that keeps me calm. And, you know, even in intense situations, because, you know, dealing with the ocean sometimes can be. Trying to stay away from fear, having faith. Um, my friend Christian Soy always says, you know, we just need to remember that God has our back. And no matter what's happening in front of us, we can handle any situation knowing that, that our back is kind of We've got strength. And strength comes from, like I mentioned before, from trusting and having faith and speaking good on yourself. That's what works for me. I mean, it's going to take years of practice, though, because I used to use the low-grade spiritual experience of, like, self-medicating, you know. I would drink and in the night and usually wake up the next day and smoke weed. I would mix, you know, and self-medicate myself so that I didn't have to feel a lot of those things that made me feel uncomfortable. But it's been quite a few years that I've used any type of self-medicating. Um, any level as far as mood altering substances are. So I find that the right path for me is uh, obviously my spiritual maintenance, which my sobriety is continuing upon. So if my sobriety is continuing upon my spiritual maintenance, spiritual maintenance first thing in the morning is top priority. That's it. It's spiritual maintenance. That's, that's the key. And to stay in stealth is really, I would say, don't take yourself so seriously. Have some levity and a sense of humor about yourself, too. You know, because like, when you get too serious about stuff, um, it takes the fun out of it. When you take your fun too seriously, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> I used to be one of those kind of guys, seriously. I was, like, I was so competitive, and, like, and it was all about me, you know? So when you get all self-centered like that, it's easy to lose the fun of uh, your skateboarding and uh, it becomes more of a job and a pleasure. Uh, just don't go there. Just stay in the pocket. Exactly what it is. Drink good, drink good tea. <laughs> My buddy. There you go, there you have it. Hopefully you guys hang out with us in a little bit. We're going to um, sign some of these little mini posters and give away some promotional stuff. We're here for Vans, so I'm glad you guys made it. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. John will probably be around later too. Call man. Let him know. I'd love to speak to him.